R Squad. What's up? Still looking a little tired. Still recovering from R Squad weekend. Anybody else out there? I would also like to take a quick moment and shout out the Los Angeles Lakers NBA champions. All right, whatever. Who cares? Week six of What If Jesus Was Serious. If you're new here or if you've missed the last couple of videos, allow me to explain. We are currently walking through Jesus' most famous message that he ever preached. A lot of scholars and smart people who study the Bible believe that he probably preached this message so many different times. So now we're taking a look at it line by line, item by item, section by section, because he taught about so many different things. He basically taught about everything that you could possibly want to know about in some form or fashion. He may directly or indirectly teach and talk about it. We're taking a look at this because a lot of us are just kind of confused, trying to figure out life, trying to figure out, is there anything that I can believe that's true? Like 100% true? Is there anything that I can count on fully and rely on and place the weight of my trust and belief in? And I believe that there is. And so we're looking at a lot of things that Jesus said, that he promised, that he said were true, and then figuring out how does this change my life? How do I live differently because of what Jesus said? Because at the end of the day, let's just be honest about this. If this this and, and, and the words in it and all the things that we study in it, the person of Jesus does not change the way we live, then, then what are we here for? All right, let's listen in. Let's see what Jesus has to say for us this week. Teaching about the law. Don't misunderstand why I've come. I did not come to abolish the law of Moses or the writings of the prophets. No, I came to accomplish their purpose. I tell you the truth. Until heaven and earth disappear, not even the smallest detail of God's law will disappear until its purpose is achieved. So if you ignore the least commandment and teach others to do the same, you will be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But anyone who obeys God's laws and teaches them will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. But I warn you, unless your righteousness is better than the righteousness of the teachers of religious law, the Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Okay. Jesus talking to this crowd of people says, I am not here to do away with the law and the prophets. Law and the prophets, basically just another way to say the Old Testament. He says, I'm not here to do away with the Old Testament. I'm not here to take away the Old Testament. At the time of Jesus, the Old Testament was the people's Bible. That was all they had was the Old Testament. The New Testament was literally happening as Jesus was walking around there, so it wasn't written yet. All these people had as the Bible was the Old Testament, which they referred to as the Law and the Prophets. A lot of people at this time had this belief and understanding that once the Savior of the world came, once the Messiah came, whoever he was, he was just going to do away with and throw out and destroy everything that was old and from the past and that he would bring in something brand new. Now Jesus was bringing in something new, a new kingdom, a new way to live, but he also lets them know that doesn't mean that you just throw out everything else. You don't throw out your history. You don't throw out all the experiences and things that you've learned from God that were a part of the Old Testament. Jesus is not here to do away with the Old Testament. He's here to fulfill it. And then in the next verse, he's talking about how nothing's going to be taken away or taken out of the law until everything's accomplished. What, what does all this mean? The Old Testament points to Jesus. It all points to Jesus. That's what it means. It means Jesus is here to accomplish and finish and bring to completion everything that was being set up and talked about and foretold in the Old Testament. He is here to complete it and to fulfill it. I want to show you this way. I've not been on a, a boogie board in a while. Just found this in my garage. Allow me to explain. This is the Bible. Well, that is actually the Bible. But for our purposes right now, this is an explanation of the Bible. The actual Bible. You've got the Old Testament and you've got the New Testament, right? Basic stuff here. The Old Testament has the creation story, Adam and Eve. It's got Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Moses, and the law freeing the Egypt, uh, freeing the Israelites from slavery in Egypt, Joseph, Samson. It's got tons of stuff, tons of incredible stories of God's people, the Israelites. And then it also has a lot of stories about, you know, the prophets, people who were foretelling and predicting of the Savior, the Messiah, who was going to come in the future. All that stuff is in the Old Testament. 
Then you've got the New Testament. New Testament, which is all about the life and person of Jesus. His life, his death, his resurrection, and then the spread of the church after that. If Jesus really was serious, that he's not here to abolish and do away with the Old Testament, he's here to fulfill it, then what does that mean? It means we must engage the Old Testament as well as the New Testament. A lot of people today, a lot of Christians today, you know what parts of the Bible they read? Just that, just that guy right there, just the New Testament. They think that because Jesus is here and because he came and brought in the New Testament, a new kingdom, that the Old Testament doesn't matter anymore. But that's just not true. Fulfillment does not mean to throw away. It means to complete. Jesus identifies himself as what the Old Testament has been pointing toward. And to understand Jesus, we have to see him through the lens of the writings of the Old Testament. Jesus is the key to the whole Bible, and we need the whole Bible to engage Jesus. All right, last thing, and then we'll be done. Going back to verse 19. He says, Therefore, anyone who sets aside even the least of these commands and teaches others accordingly will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever practices and teaches these commands will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. And then he comes back in the last verse here and gives us another example about the Pharisees who we've talked about a little bit, who we would understand. Look what he says. For I tell you that unless your righteousness exceeds or surpasses that of the Pharisees and teachers of the law, you certainly will not enter the kingdom of heaven. Kind of intense there. Quick recap on the Pharisees though. They're the teachers of the law, the smart people, the know-it-alls, the ones who have all the answers to all the questions, very theologically smart and brainy and wise. They like to stand in front of people and teach and pray and use big words to sound big and smart and all godly. But in reality, they're kind of a bunch of jerks. Their heart has not been changed and transformed by God. They just know all the right things to say and all the right things to do. The Pharisees were very committed to the Old Testament law that Jesus is talking about right here. They made it their mission to pretty much memorize the entire Old Testament. You know how much that is? Let me just pull it up right here. Look at that. Memorized, reciting on command. That's crazy. But there's a big problem. The Pharisees obeyed the outward teachings of what the Old Testament taught, the laws and all of the commands, but they did not allow their righteousness to go any deeper than their behavior. Jesus is not interested in just behavior modification and just doing the right thing. He wants our heart to be transformed. He knows that on the deepest level, what we need to be righteous and to be right with God and to have right relationship with man and with God is for our lives to be impacted on a deep heart and soul level. Because if the inside of us is right, we all know this, the external stuff is gonna be right as well. So if Jesus was serious about this last part right here, then there's a difference between doing good and being good. There is a difference between doing good and being good. It is possible to do something good while not being good yourself, while not being good on the inside. You can do a good thing and hating the good thing while you're doing it and having a bad attitude about it. Jesus is not interested in people who simply appear to be devout and who appear to be righteous because of what they do. He actually says those people are unfit for the kingdom of God. Jesus does not just want people who appear to be good. And he doesn't even just want people who do good. Jesus wants people who are good at their base level, at their foundation, at the core of who they are. They are good. And if they are good, they'll do good and appear good. And that is the challenge with laws. That's the challenge with laws in government in our world, and that's the challenge of laws in the Old Testament and in the Bible, is that laws don't make a person good. Laws can maybe make a person do something good, but laws can't transform the inner layers and inner workings of a person. They just can't do that. And so Jesus comes to fulfill the law, to complete the law, to show what the law was originally designed to do and who it was designed to create create us to be. It's to be like Jesus. So if Jesus was serious, we will engage the Old Testament as well as the New Testament. And there's a big difference between doing good and being good.